This time on Custom Work, we've got some Bondo tech. We've got updates on the A40, on the non-standard, and on the meat wagon. Let's get to the workshop now. The roof is looking pretty good. Um, spent a long time on it this week. Uh, so I've been getting all these radiuses sorted out. I've cut this piece of uh, Fomex so that I can go along because I want this radius to be the same as this radius all around the front and all around the back. Things really are starting to get there. But with this, I want to get the basic shape made and it's going to have rivet details, things like that. But I want to do it all when it's at this height rather than being on top of the wagon where I can't really reach it. So what we're going to do at the minute, I'm putting this sort of, as I, as I use lots of it, but it is still nasty chrome trim. I'm using this nasty chrome trim to form a nice demold edge around the bottom here. Because this comes down, it ends there, and then the truck's just there sort of thing. And this, this edge along here, in this line here, which is like, the edge, there is a lot of ripple in it. And uh, I could be going over that with filler for quite some time to get that nice sharp edge. But using Nasty Chrome Strip, what I can do is I can stick some of this on and then I can uh, bondo up to it and it'll give me this nice crisp edge. And also something that's very good with this, as you're sanding, you can see the black plastic edge of the chrome and you know you're at the edge and that's where it needs to be. The chrome trim stuff sticks really good, but obviously this is, this is a Bondo sanding area, so everything's a little bit dusty. So as normal, I'm gonna go with cheap spray adhesive um, all along there, just so it sticks good. Right, so I put some contact adhesive down there, just give that a minute to dry, and then we'll go on with the uh, nasty chrome strip. And what I'll be able to do is stick that on and then pack it until it's dead straight. We've got that piece of chrome trim stuck on there. Now, just as it is, you can see like the undulation in this, that it's not straight. So what I'm gonna do, using little bits of chrome trim that I've cut up. And I'll just cut some of this in half, make some little packers. What I'll do is just pack this until it looks nice and straight. And it's got that sort of nice, smooth, dynamic curve to it, which all vehicles have. Very rare for things to be dead straight. Very rare for things to go like, uh, 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 you know, like the edge of a 50p. Things will normally just run nice and straight and smooth curves. If everything always looks like that, you will always be on the right track. So let's do some packing. I've stuck that on, I spent about 20 minutes here just packing it off and if you look, you know, there's quite a big gap here and that would be a lot of filler and a lot of sanding to get it that straight but by doing this, I can manipulate this edge in and out, you know, by sort of half a mil and get that line nice and now what I'll do is backfill along here with filler and then once that's done, I'll be able to use my profiling thing to go along there and it will give me the same curve there and the same curve there and this will look super cool. Let's make some Bondo, let's stick that on. Right, so just one of my small, it's not a top tip, it's like a medium quality, it's a low quality tip, let's face it. When mixing filler, you only ever get 
the clag on one side of the spreader, this side with the beveled edges, that's for your hands, this side is for filler. But you can mix, just don't get it on there. Makes everything a lot tidier and can spread it a lot nicer. doing this you know I'm, I'm not obviously I'm not going to move the packers and I'm just going to go along this dobbing bits in and just these few spots of filler will hold that in place um, until it's dry and then I can go along and profile that in uh, a little bit better but for now all I want to do is just hold this where it is because where it is is just perfect Another thing to remember as well is that um, this chrome edging has like a protective film on it. So before you ever do anything like this, always take the protective film off. Else uh, the filler will just stick to the film. And that ain't no good. Alright, so in straightening stuff out, like if we look at this, this looks pretty straight. But I know this bit was higher because there's a join there. I know there's a join there. And then this bit's all level. But if I run my hand along, and when you run your hand along, you know, the, the heel of your hand will always feel good. But between the heel of your hands and your fingertips, but I can feel there that this section there is low. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fill from about there to there and bring this up. And I think I'd probably want to bring this up sort of seven or eight millimetres. So, never be worried to use the filler spread up the, uh, on its sideways way round. And when you're at the edge where you know that this bit is at the right height, but you're moving across to these bits and you want this bit to be higher, if you just apply less pressure to the Bondo spreader and it will raise that part up. So now I'm getting towards where I know there's a high spot there. So I'll be putting more pressure on this side of the, um, of the spreader and less pressure on the side where the bondo's low. Similarly, at this end, I'll be pushing on this side to feather it in so that this bit's high. And that takes that dip out of there. Now, what I'll do with this is using the electric long block, I will go across this and sand it down. And then all these bits that you just know are going to show up, I'll skim over this with a different type of filler. So what I'm using at the minute, I'm using... Um, U-Pole Easy One, and U-Pole Easy One is just a little bit stiffer, and then what I'll skim over this with is U-Pole Fantastic, which is a lot thinner filler, and that'll go over, and you don't get all this sort of drag marks in it and things, and uh, that fills, but that's a good way to get a lot of filling and a lot of straightness very quickly. probably said this before but also when bondoing if you know sometimes sometimes you gotta wear gloves sometimes you should wear gloves sometimes just to get the control on the spreader I don't wear gloves um, so I always keep like I know these are like just red you know like surface wipes I always keep those around because they wipe when the fill is still wet they just wipe it straight off your hands another great tip you're gonna do loads of filling don't just rely on the spreader that comes in the filler. Buy loads and loads of spreaders. Like for like a hundred, they're, you know, like £10 or something. So just buy loads of spreaders, use them once, chuck them. They'll all be on the floor. At the end of the day, you can just crack the, um, you crack the filler off it and then use that for rough filling. 
as it starts to get finer, you really do need a brand new spreader. You need that clean line. So as you're going over, it's a nice, it's a nice clean surface to a clean surface. And this, this will actually level out the filler. Um, if you've got a notch out of this, that'll put a mark in the filler. If this is starting to get a bit raggedy, um, that don't do the filler. So just buy loads of them, chuck them away. You can clean them with the wipes, but you end up using like a pack of wipes to clean a few spreaders. It's easy just to buy loads of spreaders. Okay then, so all this is dry now, and this piece of uh, nasty trim is held in place, so I can take the packers out. Always remember, because if you do this, and you've packed it off with the plastic of the thing, if you can't get it out, it doesn't matter, because it will sand up at about the same rate as the filler. If ever you're packing anything, or using anything in conjunction with filler, you never want to use something hard. If you use a piece of metal, and it sits too high, you've got to grind that back. Whereas this will all just sun together into a nice, smooth, uniform surface. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over all of this with the 40 grit in the long block and with the DA. I'm going to get all this about right and I'm going to skim this whole panel and I'm going to do it in a thinner, lighter filler, which is the Upol Fantastic stuff. And I'll go over all of this, then we'll sand that down, and then we are one step closer to this actually being primed, and then maybe one day, who knows, actually painted. Okay then, so quick update on the uh, on the A40. The A40 has been, like, it's not been on for a while because we've been doing wiring, tons of wiring. This vehicle's had to have a full rewire, like every single wire. There was nothing from the old loom that we could use. It, it was just insanely bad. But now, it's all rewired. We've got lights in, we've got indicators that work, everything. In here as well, we've now got the radiator mounted and plumbed in. We have had this car turning over. It, it sort of runs, but we have to pour petrol in at the minute. So we need to put some fuel in the tank and then get it running. But everything seems good there. Um, we're making um, something here to hold down the battery. Obviously this is all just super thin fiberglass. So I bondoed these plates on and what I'll do is I'll fiberglass all of this in and then fiberglass over this firewall where, you know, between you and the engine, there should be something. There shouldn't be <laughs> holes like this. So all of this will be filled, they'll be fiberglassed in. This bar will hold the battery in, and that's all good for the MOT. And just as this project's been all along, just making things a little bit safer, a little bit stronger, a little bit more um, car-like, a little bit less shed-like. Let's have a look at the dashboard. All the wiring is nearly in. Everything behind the dash there is looking really good. Uh, lots of relays, fuse box, everything soldered, everything shrink wrapped, everything looking really, really good and nice and reliable. All done by the genius that is Lee Cox. Right, and so in here, Everything is now wired up. This dashboard that we've shown you the back of, lots of lovely wiring, everything soldered, everything heat shrinked, everything as it should be. So on the dashboard, we've got lights that come on now when the ignition's on. What we wanted to use is these old school toggle switches, but of course some switches have to light up for the MOT. So we use the ones with the tiny LEDs in the end. So when we put the lights on, obviously the dash lights up, but also there's this small indicator light on the end of the toggle switch so you know if you've got your lights on or off. And that happens on all of these switches. It's the electric fan. And they all work nicely. Um, we've got these switches down here which operate the incredibly slow electric windows. There they go. It is slow. But 
for a car that literally had no side windows and just these um, just these runners on these pieces of wood, putting the actuator in has been a really quick and easy way to make the window open and close, keep it secure. Um, it's not the fastest, but it's really worked in this situation because we've got no mechanism at all in these. So um, as a, you know, starting from the base point of nothing to an electric window, even though it is a little bit slow, um, not too bad at all. Uh, yeah, all of this is done. We've got a uh, cigarette lighter so you can plug sat nav in. This all still wobbles a bit because it's not being finely screwed together. But yeah, everything now works in this car. And hopefully next week we will be either, you know what, next week we might even drive this up the road just to see how it goes. Which is so exciting because there have been times on this project where I've thought, this car is never actually going to pass an MOT or ever get on the road. And it's not like this came to me as an unfinished project that, or something that needed work that had been on the road. In this configuration, this car has never been on the road. So uh, really, really exciting times. And um, yeah, an enormous amount of work has gone into this car. Also on the A40, uh, we, uh, we've had to put new springs in the back of this car. Uh, the car sort of lent to one side and what we've done is we've put two brand new springs in and they're like a performance spring because because this car is based on an old kit car um, which means it's got a present and correct log book all the parts on the car are marked to escort so all the parts are nice and easy to get and because there's such a rallying heritage with the mark to escort we were able to get some single leaf, really nice leaf aftermarket leaf springs for this that fitted in. However, the car still looked a little bit like it was twisted. And what my thinking is, is when this body's been mounted, the body was slightly twisted. But using a, a lowering block, we've managed to straighten up the car and now it looks straight. The back all works so much better. The suspension is, you know, um, ha as it should be. Before it was just worn out and old, you know. Um, those springs were really old. And uh, I think probably too much load had been put on them. But now it's loads better. Should handle and drive so much better than it did before. Another thing with the springs we've managed to do is this car was jacked up on the old like 70s style of extended spring hangers and because the springs were so, it sagged down so much, um, the, they were right at their maximum with a lot of spring hanger so you can get a lot of lateral movement in the axle. But now we've put in the better springs and new bushes, we've been able to bring the mounting up on the spring hanger so there's a lot less leverage there, so the car should corner a lot better as well. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we should be able to get this car in for an MOT. I'm going to say next week, with the caveat of it might be the week after, I don't know. But definitely, this car, driving to the MOT station, is going to be absolutely awesome. Because, um, I don't know, I've seen this car a lot, and I sort of forget how special it is. But when we had it out in the drive earlier this week, it really does look great. Great gasser sort of stance, really cool look to it. Can't wait to drive it to the MOT station. So in this episode, yeah, there's no like wow moment of like, oh, that's all new. Because we've been doing a lot of very subtle bodywork on that roof and fixing this. But we've been fixing a lot of things this week. And there's been a lot of um, projects on and it's been really busy at the workshop. As you can see, like what is all this on the floor? Just junk everywhere. Cereal boxes, making gaskets, just, just so much junk, so much time spent. Um, part of next week uh, that we'll be doing is tidying all this up because it's just insane. However, thankfully, I did think to put up some large curtains so that the filler dust didn't come through here because 
in there where we've been doing that roof, the filler was like deep on the floor. It was like being on a white sandy beach, but you now without any of the good bits of being on a white sandy beach, it was just like a white, toxic, itchy, vile beach. And of course, the junk don't stop in the workshop. Like all them plaster forms and stuff that we had to build to get to, as a book to put the fiberglass around to make the roof. And it's all here. It's all under this top all in there. It's just so much junk under there. Um, I think we're going to need a skip. But before that, let's go and have a look at the enzyme because we've been working on that this week. And wow, that's been a that's been an epic nightmare. <laughs> We've had just the biggest nightmare with this car. It's been into a local garage. The guy there, he's he's a you know he's an old bloke. He knows everything about every car. Um, it came back like you know nothing had been done. Still chugging. We've now replaced under this bonnet. So it's a recon engine, brand new water pump, brand new alternator, brand new starter motor, um, brand new carb, brand new um, full dizzy. All the HT leads, the coil's brand new, um, brand new radiator, everything is brand new. And yet, the car still runs so bad, it's unbelievable. But it only runs bad when it's ticking over. Um, it's automatic as well, so the minute you put it into drive, ticking over, it stalls it. So the only way to drive it at the minute is double-footed to keep the revs up so it doesn't stall. We've been through everything. We've checked the timing so many times. We've checked the fuel. As a last ditch attempt to get this working, what we're going to do, we're going to change the idler jets in the Weber car. Because I was thinking, it's just a carb for this engine, but there's no mention of whether it's um, automatic or not. And the minute it runs on the secondary jet, driving along like this car just cruises at 50 mile an hour so smooth but then you come to the lights it stalls it stops you've got to keep starting it trying to keep the revs going so we think what it is it's too small an idler jet so i've got some idler jets on order we're going to swap them and we're going to see if that solves the problem really been strange on this um obviously i'm not the youngest of people <laughs> but and I do remember when the Pinto engine was everywhere. So many budget hot rods all had the Pinto engine in. Pintos in scrapyards when you could just go into a scrapyard. They were great days. Now though, I go into a garage, people don't even know what it is. Because it's a Cortina, you know, Cortina Sierra Capri engine. And people are like, oh, we don't, we don't really do anything with carbs anymore. It's all fuel injection and stuff. And it seems like a whole chunk of knowledge of the humble Pinto has been lost forever and everything I've done has been and everything I've found out about this has been on kit car forums or through Ford specialists. Even the simple engines have now become sort of more complicated to work with. And yes it's also trash around here even in the gazebo in the garden where we've been working on this so don't get it's not in the workshop getting covered in filler dust it's even trashed out here. We need to do a big clean up and we need to get some things finished and gone. Right and so that's it for this week. Don't forget to tune in next week. Between that time, don't forget to click subscribe, give us a big thumbs up, leave some comments below, press that bell icon, tune in next week. That's all for now. Uh, thank you very much and good night.